Well, hello, hello, God bless you, God bless you, and welcome to Prayer Time with Tokeny. As always, I am honored and I am privileged that you are taking time out of your busy schedule to meet me here Thursdays at 12 noon. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask you to take some time out right quick. Reach out to your friends, your buddies, your pals, and let them know that Tokoni Shiro Bush is live today. And there is a word from the Lord. want to encourage you, as I stated, to meet me here every Thursday at 12 noon. I can be found uh, and we are streaming on Facebook, Tokoni Cheryl Bush Ministries. We are streaming on YouTube, Tokoni Cheryl Bush. Uh, I can be also found on um, Instagram, Tokoni Bush. But as always, I am so excited about God. I'm excited about who he is, what he's doing in this season and in this hour. And yes, I am looking forward with a uh, great expectation, um, the downpouring, amen, from heaven concerning our lives. Beloved, we are in a very uh, detrimental season. However, I don't know about you, I am holding fast to the word of God as never before. We understand according to the spiritual climate. We understand according to what we are seeing in the news. We understand even uh, according to those things that we are experiencing in our personal lives that we are in a position of great shift, okay? We are, many people are being purged. Many people are being cleansed. There's a level of detoxification that's happening in the lives of God's people. God is stripping stuff off of us. He is um, preparing us to be his extraordinary kingdom advancers. And I don't know about you, but I am loving every minute of it. I came to tell you today, amen. Don't spend more time looking at the news than you spend in your word. Don't spend more time keeping up with the who, the what, the when, the why, and the how. More time in that than you are spending in your word. And in the face of God. In this season and in this hour more than ever before, we have to be saturated with the word of God. We have to be inundated and totally living, thriving on the word of God, on the promises of God, and even thriving on a greater level of revelation of what the Spirit of the Lord is saying unto the church for such a time as this. And the Spirit of the Lord is not saying a fear. The Spirit of the Lord is not saying retreat. The Spirit of the Lord is not saying damnation is coming. Oh, I want you to hear me and to hear me well. We have to embrace an ambassadorial mindset more now than ever before. For, and I pray that that's the word and not one that I have somehow created. Um, but we have to come up or we have to embrace the mindset or uh, um, of being ambassadors, understanding that we are in this world. Um, those of you uh, who are in the United States, you are in that country. Those of you who are in Nigeria, in Kenya, in um, London, okay, in Belize, wherever you find yourself today, understand that you are there, but you are not up there. Your citizenship, which is within heaven, separates you or makes you 
uh, non-moved or you are not subject to the laws of limitations in this earth realm. Your life is patterned by the word of God. Your life is um, covered and even should be led by the redemptive work of Jesus Christ. Your life uh, uh, should be in heavenly places. And when we gave our lives to Christ, there came a whole nother level of kingdom reigning that has invaded us for such a time as this. My Bible uh, explicitly tells me that a thousand may fall and 10,000 at my right hand, but nothing shall come nigh my dwelling. Somebody just needs to understand that today. No matter what is going on in the world, you have a level of spiritual covering. You have a level of um, uh, lineage or a level of protection that came when you gave your life to Christ. So stop biting your nails. Get your back up off the wall. Come out of retreat and prepare to advance. Yes, it is time for the body of Christ to stand up in our priestly positions and to begin to do and be in the earth realm as Father has predestined and preordained for us to be. I don't know about you, but I refuse to live beneath my kingdom privileges. I refuse to live beneath that that God's word says that I can have and God's word says that I can do. Yes, it all comes in timing. Yes, we have to prepare. We have to stay before the Lord. We even have to allow the Holy Spirit to uh, check us and to gauge us and deal with the areas that can potentially uh, formulate barriers to the blessings, to the increase, to the grace, and to the favor that has been laid up for us for such a time as this. And we understand according to the word that the things that uh, determine the blessings of the Lord, the favor of the Lord, the grace of the Lord, the prosperity of the Lord, the the, form, the forward momentum of the Lord is principles. You have heard me say many times, and I'm going to say it today. It makes no sense, okay, to be claiming promises when you are not living principles. This is why it's so very important that we live, move, and take up our being in God and in his written word and the requirements of us as kingdom citizens. This is going to be very key, uh, especially in 2023. Um, we understand and we know that that will be a great season of turmoil. There will be a lot of things going on around us naturally um, in our, our respective countries, in the world as a whole. But as I said before you last, a thousand may fall and 10,000 at my right hand, but nothing shall come nigh my dwelling. Nothing has a legal right or legal authority to invade your Life. Why? Because you dwell, you take up habitation, you live, you move and have your being in, through and by the word of God and the redemptive work of Yeshua Amashiach. So um, as I was in prayer this week and really getting before the Lord, Father, what, what, what you want to say? Spirit of the living God, what say ye to the church in this season? and in this hour. And what I heard was a loud and resounding, prepare ye the way 
of the Lord. Beloved, if never before, we have got to be mission-minded, hallelujah, and take on the mission that has been set before each and every one of us as believers of Christ, as followers of God. Hallelujah. We've got to get back to the basics. We've got to ask God in this season and in this hour to stir up a level of compassion, an irresistible level of compassion and passion for the lost. Hallelujah. We've gotten so busy hiding in our four walls, getting tired of each other, getting on each other's nerve, getting fat and full, trying to preach to each other. You got a revelation. I got three more revelations. Yet the world is dying on a significant basis in astronomical levels and numbers and going to hell. Why? Because the church is not positioned properly. It is time to arise in kingdom authority and take on the heart beat of God. Even in John 3, 17, it, it tells us, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. There are many who are condemning the world, but are you compelling the world to God? Are you compelling the lost to the face of God? When was the last time you took out time to witness to an unsaved person or were you so busy going to church or doing kingdom or preparing for the many things that you do within the body of Christ that you have overlooked potential brothers and sisters on a, on a regular basis that we have gotten so busy doing the church and uh, um be doing the church that we've gotten away from doing or being the purpose that we were created. I need for somebody to hear me and to understand me today. You, yes, you were created to compel others to Christ. You were created to tell a dying world about our wonderful Savior. We are about to um, embark upon the Christmas season, the very season where we celebrate the birth of, of Jesus Christ. We become so commercialized that we spend more time shopping and spending money that many don't even have. Mm -hmm. And we've gotten away from the simplicity of what, and I won't even say simplicity, the magic of what the birth of Yeshua Amashiach has meant to us and what the relevance that God wants the birth of Jesus our Lord and Savior to have in the earth realm. If you never be witnessed about the things of God before, this is that season and this is that opportunity. Many have overlooked or lost or uh, been so caught up and distracted into day-to-day -day, uh, workings in doing and being, going on their job, getting to the church, uh-huh, talking to the church people, uh-huh, praying for the church people, mm -hmm. talking about the unsaved people, yet not compelling them to Christ. But I came to compel you and to charge you to day with this word that is fresh from heaven. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Now, beloved, even in everything that I am hearing from God, the, uh, these next years are going to be great years of prosperity for the body of Christ. God is even preparing hearts now for this level or this magnitude um, of uh, streams that are about to embark our lives or overtake our 
our lives. And I came to tell you that this level of increase is not for more houses and more cars. This level of increase is to prepare the way of the Lord. This level of increase is to open doors that you might be able to release the word of the Lord, that you may be able to share mm -hmm, the message of Jesus Christ to this dying world. A lot of what is uh, happening now and within these next 10 years, you're going to see a lot of uh, governmental programs shut down. You're going to begin to see uh, a great level of need naturally and spiritually coming to the body of Christ. But God is about to bless the king kingdom as never before. This is why it's so very important to be positioned where you can hear God, where you can get in strike, you can get revelation, you can get instruction about your next. Hallelujah. Because God's about to bless you. God desires to bless you. Some of you are going through this season of purging and cleansing of your heart because God has to ensure that when you are blessed, you will not forget the purpose of the blessing. The purpose of the blessing is not to brag that you have it. The purpose of the blessing is to position you to prepare the way of the Lord. I pray today that you are hearing me and that your heart is open to receive what but thus saith the Lord for such a time as this. Grab your Bibles, get your uh, your uh, tablets, uh, get your electronic devices, and let's go to the Word of God. I will be reading from Isaiah, the 40th chapter, starting at the first verse, and I will be reading through the 11th verse today. Okay, hallelujah. This is who God has created us to be. This is who God is positioning you, kingdom advancer, kingdom citizen, to be to the world. Hallelujah. It says, comfort, comfort my people, says your God. That should be your message. In this hour more than ever before, you should be a wellspring of life and comfort to this dying world. He says, speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her heart service has been completed and that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord Lord's hand double for all of her sins. Here we are compelled to number one, speak tenderly. Uh oh, we lost about uh 500 of y'all right there. I don't know if you've noticed, baby, but folk ain't getting scared into the kingdom no more. Uh huh. I may be a part of that last generation, and I really believe that I am a part of that last harvest of souls that got scared and came into the kingdom. Hell has uh, uh coughed up a whole nother and a whole a whole nother level and a whole nother dimension of sin, lasciviousness, uh, lust, okay, compromise uh, that we uh, uh, have not even ever known or experienced before. Our children and our children's children are dealing with devils that some of us never have had to deal with. So the old way Hallelujah. I came to tell you today, will not work. Hallelujah. He says, speak tenderly to Jerusalem. Stop fussing and love on the world. Stop judging and love on the world. Stop 
damning folk to hell and get in the face of God and get a strategy to get the attention of the world and to be known in the world as a life giver. Hallelujah. He says, and once we, because we got to get past this thing right here. You know you need God. You're going to bust hell wide open. And many people will tell you in this season and in this hour, I'm already living in hell because there is a level of hell that they are living in, in this earth realm. So you've got to change your language, the, your uh, your ministry presentation. You've got to get creative in this season and in this hour because what worked yesterday is not working today. Hallelujah. So he says, speak tenderly. Let her know that it's time for her to rest. When's the last time you told somebody it's time for you to rest? God has brought an end to your warfare. Mm. Hallelujah. And that God has laid up a double portion of return. This is the message to the body uh, the, the world. This is the message. This is not for the body of Christ. This is how we should uh, be approaching the world in this hour. Let her know that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all of her sins. Double forgiveness. Oh my. Double forgiveness for all of her sins. And we understand that this is a direct result of the redemptive work of Jesus Christ. It's time to compel others. It's time to let them know, let the world know you don't have to fight no more. I have a strategy of peace, rest, and comfort. Hallelujah. So we are now being charged to release the word of comfort to this dying world that their hard service has been completed, that they have already been forgiven, that there is a path of forgiveness that has been laid out for them for such a time as this. A voice of one calling in the the wilderness prepare ye the way for uh the lord make straight in the desert a highway for our god this is what we need to be doing we need to be preparing or be be making straight a highway for God, this is where a lot of this wealth and over uh, this uh, abundance that we are about to experience as kingdom citizen is to be used. It will be used as a highway to the world, to God. Every valley will be raised up and every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level and the rugged places a plain. Hallelujah. Your struggle is over. You don't have to uh, struggle in that addiction anymore. You don't have to uh, live life restlessly. You don't have to uh, die in sickness and pain and grieve. You have already received a double portion for your sin. God has sent his son into this world and all of that follows up under what Jesus did for you thousands of years ago. It's time for the kingdom. It's time for the church to again become the answer. We've spent too much time perfecting our edifices and they are beautiful indeed. But if it is so beautiful that the world can't come in 
man and enjoyed it without you going through all of these laws. You got 50 laws on the law book, on the roll, on the uh, paper, or on the wall before they can come in. Know this, know that, sit here, sit there. You know, we've got to get past all of this stuff. We've got to understand that we are in a different time and we are in a different season. But those of you who are pastors, who are leaders, when is the last time you went out into your community and minister to your community. Got a big, beautiful church. Got a wonderful edifice. But do the people in your neighborhood where your church is, do they know you or do they know you as the people in that church down there? Hallelujah. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed and all people will see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. So here we have another charge to um, not only uh, create highways to God for this dying world to not only um, raise the valleys, okay, uh, lower the hills and the mountains, make uh, the crooked places uh, plain and straight, but we as the body of Christ have to create atmospheres for the glory. We have to die for the glory. Oh, Father, we got to get out of this checkbook mentality when it comes to the things of God. We got them in here. We gave them praise and worship. We gave them a word. Now let's roll them out. And next week, let's roll them back in here. But what in their lives changed? Was true deliverance happening? Uh, uh, is the word being teached uh, untaunted, untainted, uh, unadulterated, uh, or has it been watered down to such a way that it no longer has an effect uh, in our edifices, in our meetings, in uh, our services? Uh, are you creating atmospheres uh, for the glory, the Shekinah glory of God? Or are you so busy pretending? Or are you like Moses wearing this glory veil and everybody knows that the glory is gone? More now than ever before, we need to be praying individually that God's glory Oh, God, rest on our knives in realms and dimensions of never before. I'm not talking about the past move and the past, past move. I'm talking about God glorify me for the now. Walsa. Yes, glorify me for the now. Purge me for the now. Purge me that I may be effective in this season, in this hour, for this world that I have found myself in. You who bring good news to Zion, go up on a high mountain. You who bring good news to Jerusalem, lift up your voice and shout. Lift it up and don't be afraid. Say to the towns of Judah, here is your God. See, the sovereign Lord comes with what? Power. One of the signs. Oh, God of those who are in tune with this latter day ushering in the presence, power, glory, and presence of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is demonstration in power. Power gifts should be flowing uh 
fluently in the lives of, uh, of us as God's people. This is what's going to get the world's attention. The signs and the miracles and the wonders are not for the body of Christ. They are for the believer. Hallelujah. When, when is the day or oh how I long for the day when signs, miracles, power, and glory are such commonplace that the church is not in awe when God heals, that the church is not shocked and appalled when God moves, when God delivers. We've got to come to this place of expectation of the word of God in our lives that we can see God's hand strong and mighty. Somebody just needs to cry, Lord, oh God, anoint my shadow. Ooh, These are the things that God is desiring to do for such a time as this. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arm and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. This is how you're going to sell God to this world in this hour by doing and being just that. Jesus left us with the great charge before he left this dispensation and went back to heaven. He told us these things that I have done shall ye do and greater. It is far times for greater manifestations of the power, the glory, and the authority of God. Oh, but I came to warn you, church, it comes not without death. Hallelujah. Some of you are feeling like you are dying. You are dying. And yes, you are. And it's a good thing. God is desiring to kill any and everything in us that distorts our purpose where we were created to tell the world about him. Any and everything that distorts the world's view of God in our lives needs to be dealt with, needs to be eradicated, needs to be evicted. We become so caught up in how we look and how people see us and how people perceive us. Many leaders now are too prideful and arrogant to get in lines and get prayed for. You don't want the people to see you get prayed for. You don't want the people to see you broken and weak and crying out before God. So tell me this, what will they pattern after? This is why we have such a strong spirit of pride that has invaded the doors, the entryways, and the portals of the churches in the earth realm in this season and in this hour. Somebody just needs to cry, God, kill it all, kill it all. Kill the pride in me. Yes, uh, Messiah. deal with anything in me mm -hmm, that would keep me from being an example to my people, to my family, to the people that are watching me. Oh God, it's time for us to get right church. It's time for us to get a position church that we may be able to represent God at a whole nother level. This is why in the body of Christ, there's a, such a feeling of suffering, such a feeling of loss. Hallelujah, because God is trying to get your attention 
ask him, what's standing between me and your glory? Oh, what's standing between me and your power? What am I doing that is keeping me from touching you and exemplifying you at the level and at the rate and at the momentum that you have called me to for such a time as this. Out of the wellsprings of our hearts as the body of Christ needs to arise that old song uh-huh that they used to say in the church uh-huh it's not my mother it's not my father it's not my sister it's not my brother but it's me it's me it's me oh lord standing in the need of prayer somebody needs to cry out lord save me again here allow the cares and the pull of being a church member, uh -huh, of living a facade, uh -huh, that I have been stripped uh, of my salvation. I have compromised uh -huh, the work of, the finished work of Jesus Christ in my life. Lord, save my soul. Oh, God. God, get all that hurt and pain and mess up out of me that's keeping me from experiencing an open heaven, uh, having open heaven experiences. Oh, God, it's shut Oh, God, open the heavens to my cry again. Yay! Father, open the heavens to my cry again. Hey, God. And one of the things that God told me to share with you on today that uh, we all understand that we have purpose, but a part of your purpose, the purpose of the body of Christ or kingdom citizens as a whole is to compel others to God. Even Jesus understood his purpose. Luke 19 and 10, it says, For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. The Son of Man has come to seek and to save the lost. When's the last time you sought the lost? Or uh, are they a problem when they come to your church? Are they messing up your program? Mm -hmm. Are they messing up uh -huh, your religious time that you say you spend it in the face of God? Many don't want to compel the lost. They want church transfers. But let me tell you something, body of Christ, we're going to answer for that too. Because our number one job is to compel others to Christ. According to Matthew, the 28th chapter, verses 19 and 20, we are to go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you and lo I am with you always even until the end of the earth amen here is the blueprint of the church right here here is the blueprint of the average everyday saints to go. He didn't say preachers and pastors and prophets and evangelists and teachers. He said go. That is one part of command or one part of purpose that we all have in common. Go. Teach all nations. Who baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, 
and of the Holy Ghost. Teach them the simplicity of the word. We done got too deep. Uh -huh. We done got too deep in the body of Christ. And hear me and hear me. Oh, baby, I love deep. But deep goes but so far if your foundation is weak. Deep goes but so far mm -hmm, if it's built upon an unstable foundation. We need to get back to this part, learning how to observe all, to, well, all things that he's commanded. We need to get back to the Bible. We need to spend more time on the commandments and the requirements of the Lord. Helping people to understand not just the good part of the scripture passage, but the requirements that proceeded or precede the blessings. The blessings have requirements. And you got people out here expecting blessings, but have not been taught principles. I was sharing with one of my spiritual daughters the other day. God is about to begin to do things differently. Pastors, leaders, apostles, bishops. Oh God, I need for you to hear me and hear me well. You need to prepare your hearts for new and innovative and creative ideas of evangelizing. <clears throat> that God is about to bring forward and begin to present before you. Just in case you have not heard, some people ain't coming to church. And matter of fact, there are a lot of people that ain't going to church. They ain't going to your church. You can invite them to church and they ain't gonna come. They don't want no parts of it. But they'll listen to you. I want to minister to somebody today. You inviting them to church and they asking you when you going to do Bible study. You inviting them to the program and they asking you when you going to do a program. What God is doing in this season and in this hour, beloved, connected with our purpose is he is um, defining our spheres of influence. Or he is making it clear and plain those that we have been created for in the earth realm. People are looking <coughs> for relatable things. You so holy, folk can't cuss around you. You so righteous, you can't hear cuss word. And you just go up in tongues, baby. This is what the world is doing. Yeah, I understand reverential respect. I understand all of that. But I don't know if you've noticed this, that, that the reverential respect is not the same anymore. Can people be themselves with you? Or do they have to pretend with you? I'm trying to help your witness. Can people be real and true? <clears throat> or are they having to fake it and act like it's okay? When's the last time somebody was free enough to be themselves in your presence? Or are you so holy and deep? That people got to pretend like they had it together. Are you, are you relatable enough? Are you real enough that people can tell you what's on their hearts? They can pour out what's on their hearts and in their minds. I'm talking about the world. Stop running from the people. Every time I go to work, somebody want me to pray for them. I don't keep telling them to come to church. Baby, they ain't coming to church. Pray for them right now. That might be your church. That might be your sphere right there on your job. Take time. Pray for them. 
cries unto God concerning their situations, their circumstances, and their prayer requests. <coughs> it's time to compel the world to God. It's time to stop repelling. Because they don't want no part of you. Because you miss it. You keep stuff going. You got some more than they do. And in their minds, they say, if this is the church, I don't want to go on something. Oh, I'm coming up. I'm coming at you today. Because this thing resonated. It hit my spirit so heavy and so hard. We are falling short of our assignment as the body of Christ. Time to get out of those walls. It's time to get out into the community. It's time to feed God's sheep, not just the word. It's time to feed them natural substance. Time to see about the widows. It's time to minister to the orphans. It's time to get back to the basics. Oh, God, of what we were created to do. Acts 2, 28 through 38 through 40. Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost for the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many of the words did he testify and exhort or encourage, saying, save yourselves from this untoward generation. Repent. Be baptized. Your promise has already been created for you. You don't have to suffer. You don't have to rely on drugs. You don't have to rely on pills. You don't have to rely on a man. Repent, give your life to Christ. He's readily waiting to minister his love to you that comes without cause. Then they gladly received they that gladly received his word were baptized. And here we say, here we see it. They that gladly received. Everybody's not going to gladly receive. But you can't get caught up in that either. Because one planteth, one watereth, but God gives the increase. Then that they, glad, they that gladly received his word were baptized. Are you presenting the gospel in such a manner that people can gladly receive it? That's the first question. You don't want to be saved. We're going in. You're going to bust hell wide open. And you keep talking like that, you're going to do it too. Uh-oh. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And we understand about the Acts Church that so lives were they added daily. The eyes were added daily to the church because they understood the mission. They understood the purpose. And I want to take a minute to share this with somebody who has yet to give your life to Christ. God is waiting on you, sir. He's waiting on you, man. He's prepared a, a gateway. He has paved the way through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord. There is no problem, there is no situation, there is no circumstance that you find yourself in right now that God 
would stop loving you. He loves you right there, baby. In the midst of your mess. In the midst of your mistakes. He loves you right there. And he is open-armed and waiting to receive you in as his own. Somebody that's under the sound of my voice, you've pulled away or dwindled away from the things of God. You're, you're in a backslidden state. Somebody's sitting up in church every Sunday and you're in a backslidden state. You know it. You feel it. And God is saying, come. I'm ready to forgive you. Forgive yourself. Allow me to cover you and saturate you with my love and with my presence and with my power. Hallelujah. And I want to do a brief prayer for somebody who has decided that this is the day that they want to give their life to Christ. Hallelujah. Repeat after me. Father, it's me. I have tried to live this life without you. But nothing that I have done thus far has worked. I don't know peace. I don't know joy. And I'm literally tired of fighting you. You said in your word, if I receive the redemptive work of Jesus in my heart. If I believe it and receive that Jesus died for my sin, that I am saved. I am asking you to save my soul. I surrender my heart. I, I surrender my life. I surrender everything about me unto you. I rededicate my life to you. I ask that you purge me with hyssop, that you cleanse me through and through, that you make me right in your sight. Because I want the promise of a heavenly home Ooh, to be tangible and existence in my life. I recognize I am nothing without you. But I can do all things with you in my life. Hallelujah and amen. If you pray that prayer with me for salvation or for rededication, I'm going to ask that you DM me, let me know. Um, I, I want to minister to you personally. If you gave your life to Christ today, I want to minister to you personally. So DM me or text me 706-305-8588. And I want to love up on you and share some things with you to get you moving forward in this new life. And on behalf of the kingdom of God, I welcome you into the fold. Hallelujah. Body of Christ, I want to pray for you today. I want to pray that God stirs up a passion for the lost and those who don't know him that you've never experienced before. It's time to get outside of the four walls. It's time to do your, your first purpose, and that is to compel others to Christ. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for who you are, for what you are doing, for what you've done. And I expectantly look forward to that that has yet to be revealed in the earth realm. We, your people, come and we repent now for falling short of our purpose not doing our first ministry, which is to compel others unto you. We ask that you forgive us for falling short and 
not taking oh, the seriousness of compelling others and preparing highways uh, to heaven and making crooked places straight and rough places plain concerning you and the things of you. We ask in the name of Jesus that you forgive us. And we know according to your word that if we ask, it shall be given. We thank you today, Lord God, for reminding us of what we were created to do and who we were created to be. We repent for getting so busy doing church that we have fallen short of being the church, being your voice pieces, your mouthpieces, your trumpets in the earth realm to compel others unto you. Father, we ask right now in the name of Jesus that you will stir up a level of passion for the lost that we've never known and that we've never experienced before. Father, we cry out even now for this world, this dying world that has yet to surrender to your will and to your way and to your word. We cry out today, oh God, for strategy, for wisdom, and for divine revelation on high, from on high on how to compel this world unto you. Oh God, save our country. Save every country that's represented under the sound of my voice. Save every nation that is represented under the sound of my voice. Save every city, Ooh, every state, every region that is represented under the sound of my voice, Holy Spirit, according to the word of God. They can't come unless you draw. We cry out today, Spirit of the living God, draw as never before those who are lost. We call them out of their beds of affliction, their beds of defeat, their beds <clears throat> and houses of comfort and we call them into the fold of Yeshua Amashia. Father God in the holy and majestic name of Jesus Christ. Don't let us get so caught up in church and our lives and what we are in and what we're going to that we miss. Oh God, compelling moments that we miss. Oh God, salvation opportunities. Keep us ever so minded of those in this world because you said in your word that you wish that all would be saved that none would be lost you haven't forgotten you haven't given up on them so don't allow us to give up on them put them before us oh god soften our hearts for the lost yet again. Save the lost. Save our families. Save our children. 
Save our grandchildren. Save our neighbors. Oh God, save our enemies. Give us a level of prayer. And lives of prayer. That we will continually cry out for those who don't know you. Even though...